Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. In the past 10 plus years, we have visited every corner of Hubei province. We explored dozens of undeveloped caves. Lucilia Sericata Possible. Lucilia Sericata. Lucilia. I'm guessing Lucilia is from the Latin for light. I'm guessing it's a, a firefly. Sericata. Let's see. Common green bottle fly. Okay. I should stop pretending that I know Latin. Keep going. 300 types of virus vectors. But I do hope these virus preserve for... Oh, go back, go back, go back. I was looking at the, I was looking at the names instead of reading the words. But I do hope these virus samples will only be preserved for scientific research. Keep going. And will never be used in real life. Well, you know what? Um, that's what we call foreshadowing, people. That's what we call foreshadowing. That's a dramatic moment. I hope these viruses will never be used in real life. Keep going. Because humans need not only the vaccines, but also the protection from the nature. Pause. Nearly 2,000 types of viruses have been discovered by Chinese CDC authorities over the last 12 years. Only 2,284 types of viruses had been discovered worldwide over the 200 years prior to China's discovery. They're very proud. They're a virus superpower. Keep going. That's an incredible clip from a government-produced propaganda video in China boasting about how Wuhan researchers had discovered more viruses than the rest of the world combined. And there you saw one of their intrepid bat catchers going into caves, trapping bats and the ticks on them, and bringing that back to the lab to work on those viruses. Is it possible that what we call COVID-19 came from such a lab? That's one thesis, the alternative being it leapt from animals to people naturally. Well, our friend Gordon G. Chang has a major essay on this subject in Newsweek magazine. The article is called Stop China from Getting a Civilization Killing Pathogen. You can follow Gordon at Gordon G. Chang on Twitter, and he joins us via Skype now. Gordon, great to see you again. Congratulations on your piece in Newsweek. I am actually a little surprised that such a uh, large reputation legacy media company like Newsweek would publish a pretty edgy piece. I'm impressed that they allowed you to, to put a controversial thesis because very recently, this would be something that would get you banned or deplatformed for even talking about. Yes, the, the national conversation has changed so much in the last couple of weeks. And, I, you know, it, it's really hard to say what, why, but I think that just the weight of evidence now points to a lab leak. And, and part of it is, uh, you know, the World Health Organization mission to Wuhan in January and February. It was evident that Beijing did its best to prevent the WHO from learning anything, especially those 174 patient cases that the WHO investigators thought could actually lead to the origin of the disease. Well, Beijing just stiffed them. Huh. And so, you know, you do this long enough and eventually people start to figure it out that, yeah, Beijing has something to hide and it must be the lab. This felt fairly partisan. I mean, I think one of the problems during the Trump administration is that Trump would say something and whether it was reasonable or not, a whole uh, counterweight, Democrats, but also other institutions and the media would take the opposite view just to be contrarian to him. And, and I know when he said the phrase China virus and when he blamed China, I felt like that itself caused a reaction because no one wanted to agree with Trump. And I note that under Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, there was sort of an intelligence 
uh, project to, to look into this. Joe Biden nixed that. But I understand from reading in your article that Joe Biden has actually issued his own order to the U.S. intelligence community to get info on the, the roots of this virus within 90 days. So it, it's almost like Biden himself is reviving Trump's thesis. Is that an accurate statement? Yes. Uh, May 26 was an extraordinary day because we started the day with that CNN reporting that the State Department spiked its own investigation into the origins of the coronavirus, as you just said. Then there was this uproar. And then later on, Biden had to issue his order to the intelligence community to come back in 90 days to talk about what they knew hmm. about the origins. I think that when Biden woke up on Wednesday, he had no idea that he was going to do this. You know, because one of the things is he really has not been interested in the origins of this disease. In February, he spent two hours, two hours on the phone with Xi Jinping. And by Biden's own admission, he didn't raise the issue of COVID-19. Huh. So, um, you know, Biden has been has been dragged into this um, and the American public isn't going to let him go. Wow. Well, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that I was impressed that Newsweek ran this piece. Uh, I suppose it's becoming normalized if Joe Biden himself wants answers. I guess that gives permission to a lot of folks to talk about it. But it's been difficult until now. I mean, Facebook, um, which throttles a lot of reporting, they regarded it as a conspiracy theory. And we live a lot on YouTube. YouTube has page after page of rules of what you cannot say about the pandemic, including disputing certain aspects of its origin. Same thing with Amazon. I think that's just as scary. It's, it's one thing for officials not to be interested, but when people express interest for the tech giants to come in and, and censor it. Why do you think that is? Why is Facebook, which is banned in China, why is Facebook so concerned uh, about this theory of the origins of the virus that until like a, two weeks ago, they were banning anyone from speculating on it. Ezra, you stumped me. Hmm. Um, I don't know the answer to that. Um, I fear the worst that really that this was a partisan um, posture that they took. They wanted to protect um, the Democratic Party. They, I, I don't know. Um, but whatever it was, it's not good. Because um, as you point out, you know, they um, censored um, information. They censored views, which now very well could very well be right. And, and I think are right. So this is this is a very serious situation. And why they did it, um, we're just going to have to ask Mark Zuckerberg and other people. That's an excerpt from my daily show, The Ezra Levant Show. Every day I do a monologue on the news of the day, then I interview an interesting guest, and then I read my hate mail. You gotta subscribe. Go to rebelnews.com.